You are looking at just one of the foundational studies in this new millennium of space weather and human health. Since this was published, the field has utterly taken off, but this paper truly said it best in the mental scheme of things. Severe disturbances of geomagnetic conditions cause negative influence, seriously disintegrate brain's functionality, activate breaking processes, and amplify the negative emotional background of an individual. What does that mean? Cognition? Locomotive functions, memory, anxiety, panic, depression, emotional instability, even suicide, have been statistically correlated with the most severe geomagnetic storms. They are also correlated with extreme cosmic ray events, but today we can focus on the solar side and keep it to these psychological effects. A new study has tied cognition and memory to global brain waves oscillating in the alpha and theta frequencies, moving relatively slowly across the cortex considering we're talking about electrical energy, and so given that the psychological side of space weather and human health is firmly established statistically, but the mechanisms of action remain largely elusive or unproven, let's work on fixing that here. By the way, there are dozens of papers citing this and that previous one we showed, further establishing the field in the last 12 years, but given our brain focus, I'm choosing to remember some of the foundational pillars here today. Solar storms indeed produce extremely low frequency waves, as shown by every relevant detector, but again, a blast from the past, we are remembering the Fluxgate magnetometer at HARP. While its antenna stimulated ionospheric plasma, this was one of the many detectors of magnetic field activity induced by the sun. We are right in that lower brainwave category here, including those we just discussed necessary for brain function. Well, to find the relationship to brain function specifically, we need to know the effects of these specific frequencies. Well, a key 2016 work looking at one of the key frequencies dinged by the sun in severe storm events found that locomotor activity, that electrical activity, was significantly decreased. The effects diminished in the hours and days afterward. Now, true enough, some frequencies are helpful. At 12 Hz exposure, it was found that memory improves, although notable that that study also found zero improvement in those lower ranges we were just talking about involved with the sun. The sacrifice that the study animals made here was to give us the definitive knowledge that the locus ceruleus takes a significant reduction in firing rate and that the global brain proteome changes. The proteome is all the proteins able to be expressed by the cells and tissues in the brain, so changes to this are significant. The locus ceruleus, as intimidating a term as it might be, it offers the key to space weather walking in the door of our psyche. It is responsible for modulating our immediate psychological responses to stress and panic. And now we begin to very easily see how some of the symptoms and events, anxiety, depression, cognitive diminution, even suicide, could be connected dots here. This is how the sun makes Earth's magnetic field ring when it hits us hard. At least one of those frequencies specifically degrades electrical activity in the locus ceruleus, which degrades our ability to deal with stress and panic properly or in the way we normally do. Not to mention the global proteome changes and operation in the exact same frequencies we have just learned our brain is trying to use to operate cognitively. Sun, Earth, frequency, brain, stress. End of transmission.